But over time, what has happened is rather than looking at singular locations, a landfill or a, a toxic polluter, we're beginning to look at the cumulative burden that a community might face. We used to kind of look at a, um, a stressor or a risk in, as kind of a focus of environmental justice work. And then all the things and people exposed to that stressor or risk, like humans, uh, communities, but also maybe wildlife or in, you know waters or air. And now we talk about the community or a group of people being at the center and then all the stressors and, and risks impacting that community around them. So we've gone from this um, singularity to a cumulative health and cumulative risk kind of assessment. So that's been a big evolution. In, on the research, on the social side, environmental justice, environmental racism has really um, gone away in the public's consciousness. It was there in the 90s because it was in the media. Um, it's no longer in the media regularly or as prominent as it once was. And I think um, it's also a difficult thing to get your head around um, that we have an institutional and, and social systems that allow those disparities to build up over time. So I try to really foster a, a discussion-based classroom rather than just a lecture and and, and I'm privileged in a way because I do have small classes where I can take advantage of that. Um, and what I do is bring in stories of people in communities who are facing these environmental injustices. So I have a story of a South Seattle father um, who was part of a focus group. I uh, described to the students how when we ask, have you ever experienced environmental injustice before in this focus group and this young father described the day he was at his son's soccer field in South Seattle. And he smelled metal, burning metal. And he looked around the soccer field um, and saw a little kind of manufacturing plating operation probably. Um, right next to the soccer field and a big kind of fan to vent the em fugitive emissions. And, you know, this was a quite shocking for a Seattleite in this green, sustainable city to be sitting there with his um, son and the rest of the soccer players seeing this disparity that no one in North Seattle would experience. Right? Or for that matter, no one in Bellingham would experience. A story I share with them that was captured on film by a journalist with our Planet magazine. Um, and this is a mother who also lives in South Seattle and also describes uh, the, s the smells of the day because of, you know, the industrial activity going along. So um, Having those kind of raw stories about the disparity is a, a, a big piece of, of how I do that. And then I also bring in articles, uh, research that um, really lays out the kind of disparity. So those questions really get students thinking about what am I doing or I guess what am I going to be doing when I start applying these skills in a social and economic system where disparities are built in, they're institutional. Am I going to ignore them and just work for the task at hand, work for the client at hand, or am I going to do more? <laughs>